Today I'm going to talk about the types of immunities. We've just seen a video that shows us uh, using some great um, video games and anime characters to kind of demonstrate and explain the types of immunities. Our bodies are really subjected to a ton of different things every day that should probably kill us. But don't worry about it because for everything that seems to attack us we've got plenty of things to defend us. And that's why this unit is really called 6.3 defenses. The things that attack us are actually pathogens. Now what could a pathogen be? It could be a bacteria, could be a virus, could be a fungi, could be some sort of parasite, could be some sort of toxic protein. Uh, the important thing to remember though is that it's it's not really something which is physical. I mean it's not when you get a splinter for example it's not really the splinter that's the pathogen it's the bacteria that it brings into you and the splinter was just the thing that was really puncturing your body so let's talk about the classifications of defenses and then we'll uh, see if we can sort them out a little bit innate immunity innate means to be born with um, these are things that the minute you pop out you're already ready to go so we have a lot of these things which have been developed to protect us the moment we begin life on the outside. Uh, skin, for example, would be a great example. Tears, mucus uh, enzymes, uh, blood clotting ability, inflammation. We'll, we'll talk about this in a lot of detail. Acquired immunities are things that we're not really born with, but they're things that will develop over time. So for example, antibodies when you're exposed to various diseases eventually you acquire the ability to make antibodies so these are things that we will increase in time and we'll get stronger and better to defend ourselves over time passive immunity passive immunity are antibodies but they're antibodies that we receive from somebody else they're not really from us so the classic example of passive immunities of course would be mother's milk this is why doctors these days are recommending breastfeeding. It's because the babies get a certain amount of the mother's antibodies simply because they're passively transferring across the milk. Artificial immunity, which is the most interesting development really of the 20th century, has been the development of vaccinations. Um, most of us have been vaccinated against a host of things or else we couldn't really be in school smallpox, chickenpox these days, measles, mumps, rubella. Uh, the latest one I think was uh, the cervical cancer vaccine. So hopefully we'll get more and more of these as time goes on. Cellular immunity. Now cellular immunity means that there are actually cells in your body, whole cells, which are involved in destroying pathogens that get in there. Best example of this course would be phagocytes. Sometimes they're called macrophages. Sometimes they're called neutrophils. These are, these are types of very big white blood cells. And when we talk about the lymphatic system, we'll talk about those in more detail. The humoral or active immunity is um, your typical defense, the antibody system. And antibodies are produced by cells, but they're not really the cells which are doing the work. They're sort of the missiles coming out of cells. And We'll talk about this in a lot more detail. It's very complicated and we'll spend several days on this. Natural immunity. Now natural immunity is a difficult term. It means immunity that results as a infection. So you have a pathogen. We'll talk later on about what uh, challenge and response uh, method is all about. But let's suppose that you have a um, pathogen which comes in and uh, there are many different ways your body could respond to it. These would be things that uh, might be uh, blood clotting and inflammation and so forth, but they could also be antibodies and they could also be cells. So natural immunity is kind of a big term. And that concludes my little introduction about immunities.